what's good y'all it's your boy Jamon McKinney be sure to hit that like button right now subscribe to my channel if you're new and just seeing my channel for the first time I do post a ton of great sports videos pretty much each week on today guys we're going to be talking about college basketball we're all we're gonna be previewing and breaking down these teams we're gonna preview the um UNC Duke game I'm gonna tell you um, who's gonna win that game I'm also gonna preview the Michigan Michigan State game tell you who's gonna win that game as well we're gonna talk about these teams as far as where I stand on them for the whole season but you got Duke UNC up first I do think I'm a Tar Heels fan by the way I do think my Tar Heels the UNC Tar Heels will be the Duke Blue Devils once again I really do um I understand it's hard to sweep Duke in the season but they don't have Zion Williamson still and ever since Zion Williamson has pretty much gotten hurt Duke has really not been necessarily a top 10 team per se they just haven't I mean the other night they struggled to beat a Wake Forest team that has won I'm sorry that has lost 27 straight games at Duke 27 straight games. The ball. Childress is who they want to have it. Childress puts it up. Tough shot. Brown gets the rebound. And it's beat them at home by one point. One point. I mean, they also lost to Virginia Tech. Now, Virginia Tech's not a bad team, but you look at the athletes Virginia Tech has. They're nowhere near the talent level of Duke. Duke should be not losing to Virginia Tech with the caliber of players they have. I saw them when Zion Williamson went out versus UNC. UNC scored 62 some points on the on the paint on them. Um, you know, my targets, you know, look at Duke. Even before Zion Williamson got hurt, you know. They were not a great three-point shooting team. Now, they didn't really have to necessarily be a great three-point three shooting team when Zion Williamson was on the lineup. The reason why is because they were so dominant inside. You know, they could just pound the ball inside with Zion. You know, and it also opened up the court for R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish and Trey Jones and things like that. But now that Zion Williamson, who is such a force rebounding the ball, defending down low, um, banging down low, you know, getting points in the paint, now that he's gone, you look at the statistics. Their defense is falling off. Their offense is falling off. Their shooting percentage is falling off. Um, from two, from three, the rebounding is dipped. Their steals per game, blocks per game, all that good stuff. Zion Williamson has that impact global player. Is one of the reasons why he's probably projected to be a number one overall pick. But a lot, a lot of people don't know if he's going to return. So I, I just don't think Duke can hit enough perimeter shots to make to win this game. And I don't think they can hit enough perimeter shots to go far in March Madness. Um, Duke right now is 235th in the nation. 235th in the nation in free throw percentage from the field you know that's not very good that's not a great free throw shooting team at all they're even worse from three they're 328th um as far as three point field goal percentage goes so like in march madness you're going to need to hit tough perimeter shots i do think duke can score they're gonna put some points you know they have too much talented players you know honestly i don't understand why duke's struggling so much because it's really inexcusable it's actually funny to me you have two other top five picks and cam reddish and zion with and um rj barrett and you're struggling like this you can't even hardly beat wake forest with those players i mean give me a break duke you're so ready i don't want to hear unc rules the acc right now unc is the best team in the acc right now i understand virginia is pretty good but i think unc is the best team in the acc right now um but getting back to duke um they can defend pretty well you know they're not elite defensively they're pretty good defensively they can move they move can move the ball they have mike trusevsky but i just don't think you know i think the shooting is going to catch up to them i really do I just think that you need to hit tough perimeter shots in order to win March Madison. I don't think they can do that. So now we talked about the Duke Blue Devils. Let's talk a little bit about my UNC Tar Heels. We've had some great wins on the year. We beat a pretty good Florida State team. Uh, pretty much blew them out. Blew out Virginia Tech, the 15th ranked team in the nation right now. Uh, blew out Gonzaga. Um, you know, so we have some pretty good wins. Now we also have some weird losses. You know, well, I think this. I think the loss to Michigan early in the year, we got absolutely annihilated in their place. Um, I give Michigan credit. They absolutely beat us to death. But I do think that we were still a very, very young team at that time, and we were still trying to figure things out. I do think UNC has some NBA talent. You know, Kobe White, he's going he's gonna to probably be a first-round pick if he comes out this year. Um, Luke May, he's not going to be a first-round pick or anything like that. But he can be a solid piece for someone in the NBA. Cam Johnson, pretty good player, too. You know, he can shoot the lights out the three. Wherever he's going, we're one of the better teams in the nation. We're top three in scoring. We're the best rebounding team in the nation. We're one of the top uh, passing teams in the nation as well. So there's a lot to like about us. 
players. And I just mentioned the NBA talent with Kobe White, Nasir Little, Cam Johnson, and Luke May. We have an elite head coach too. Roy Williams to me is the second best co head coach behind um, Mike Krzyzewski. And you, I think we can win any style of game in March Madness. Whether we need to shoot the lights out the three, we can do that. I don't think Duke can shoot the lights out the three in a Mar March Madness game. At least they have not proven they can do so. I need, you know, we're we're one of the best rebounding teams, so we can get offensive rebounds. We can bang down low. We're not going to give teams extra extra possessions. We're one of the top passing teams. You know, um, I just think that you know we're we're the clear favorite in the ACC right now. And I understand Virginia is pretty good, and they also beat us in UNC. Virginia's offense is not even the top 100 in scoring. Their defense is elite, no doubt. Their defense is elite. But I think you know it caught to them last year. You know, I think last year you know Virginia they were great defensively, offensively they were terrible. Um, you know, and it didn't it showed in March Madness. They were one of the top teams all year, but they couldn't score enough in March Madness. I think that we're I think that we're clearly the best team in the ACC right now. I think we can win in a variety of different ways. I just think we're the most complete team in the ACC, whether it be scoring, defense, all that good stuff. I do think we'll beat Duke, um, you know, in a very, very close game at home. Now let's get on to Michigan and Michigan State. Now to me, guys, I'm sorry. Michigan State's one of the most overrated programs in America. They just are, you know. Let's look at the past through three years. Tom Izzo has failed to get this team out of the second round um, out of each of the past three years. You know, they had Miles Bridges and Jared Jackson last year. Couldn't even get past the second round. I mean, I I actually picked Michigan State to win uh, it all in March Madness last year. I picked them over Arizona. That ain't go so well. But either way, you know, getting back to Michigan State, they're having a pretty, pretty solid season. Um, you know, I do think they'll lose this game. Uh, Michigan, to me, is just a better team from watching all the games. You know, but there's some things to like about Michigan State. Let's appreciate them for a little bit. Um, they're passing. They're an elite team. They're top three in, the, in passing in the NCAA. Um, top 25 scoring team as well. Um, they're top four in rebounding. Um, but why should I trust them? The last three years have shown that, that I shouldn't trust them. They've also they've also pretty much lost to every good team they played. They lost to Kansas early in the year. It was a five-point game, but I watched the whole game. Um, you know, not any time in that game that I think Michigan State can come back and win the game. So, I mean, they lost to Purdue by 10 points. Not a whole lot of shame in that, but again, is Purdue necessarily an elite team? I don't think they're necessarily an elite team. Um, they also lost to Illinois, which is not a great team. They lost to Indiana twice. I mean, Indiana, who do they have? All they have is Romeo Langford. I mean, Romeo Langford is an absolute dog. I get it. But who else do they have? They don't have anybody else, in my opinion. Um, they also lost to Louisville. Louisville's a decent team. They've been in and out of the rankings, but they can't close out games. So I do think Michigan State, outside of success in the Big Ten, their out-of-conference wins are very, very poor. They're not they're not necessarily a great, great team. They're solid in a lot of areas, but I don't think they're a great team. I don't think they have the athletes Michigan has. Now, Michigan, on the other hand, you know, they have some pretty good wins um, out of conference. They absolutely annihilated my UNC Tar Heels. They're, one, they're the second best defensive team to me behind Virginia. Now, Michigan State did come into Michigan and beat them. I'm very aware of that, guys. I'm super, super aware of that. I do think that it was more bad Michigan as far, not necessarily good Michigan State. Michigan State obviously won the game, but I do think it was more so bad Michigan. I think Michigan had a lack of adjustments. You know, they were playing a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. It was not a whole lot of ball movement. It was about a seven-minute stretch where they only scored about four or five points. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen again. I just think Michigan is the better team, and they got Jordan Poole, some pretty good players. And Michigan State has some pretty good players, too, but, um, you know, Michigan State, also, they beat themselves. You know, they're 174 for the nation as far as turnovers go. Michigan is number one. They're, they have they have the least amount of turnovers on the year, Michigan does. Not Michigan State. Michigan State is 174 from the turnover category. So, I do think Michigan does not beat themselves. I don't think they'll beat themselves this game. The only reason why I'm picking this to be a close game is because I think it's in, Mich in Michigan State. It's going to be a very tough environment, but I think Michigan is going to bounce back. I do believe they're the better team. You know, I really do. Um, you know, Indiana came into Michigan State to beat them. Why can't Michigan come into uh, Michigan State and beat Michigan um, State? So I do think that, you know, Michigan is going to win. I think uh, UNC is going to win. Uh, to me, the only two teams out of these four that can make a run in March Madness are UNC and Michigan. I definitely buy UNC and Michigan as far as um, winning it all this year. I don't necessarily buy Michigan State just due to the fact that the turnover issues I don't, they pretty much are hyped every year. I don't believe in them. Um, you know, until they get past the second round, I can't really, you know, put my arms around them and say, hey, they're an elite team. No. And Duke just does not have enough shooting to me to make it that far March Madness. I could be wrong. If Zion Williamson comes back, that could be very key. But that's pretty much it for this video, y'all. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. Give me your commentary. What do you think about these four teams? Do you think these teams can make a run of March Madness? I'm Ghost.